My name is Justin, and today I will be presenting my research project on in silico virtual screening and drug design for the androgen receptor. Prostate cancer is one of the leading types of cancers in men across the globe. It is estimated that approximately 1 in 9 men will develop prostate cancer in their lifetime. Although the cause of prostate cancer is still uncertain, it is clear that one of the main contributing factors to the growth of prostate cancers is the androgen receptor. Indeed, studies have shown that 15 to 30% of patients with prostate cancer have point mutations in the receptor that causes loss of specificity for ligands, resulting in increased activation of the receptor by compounds other than androgens. Additionally, 30 to 50% of prostate cancers have overexpression of the androgen receptor, which allow for the activation of these receptors even when there are limited amounts of available endogenous androgens. The androgen receptor is a nuclear transcription factor that dimerizes upon androgen binding and enters the nucleus where it regulates the expression of genes involved in cellular growth, proliferation, differentiation, and metabolism. Given these functions, it is not surprising that the overexpression and increased activity of the androgen receptor promotes the growth of these prostate cancer cells. One of the biggest issues in the treatment of prostate cancer with drugs is that with prolonged use of these drugs, the cancer cells acquire mutations in the androgen receptor ligand binding pocket that confer resistance. These drugs include steroidal and non-steroidal antiandrogens, which in some cases get converted from antagonists to agonists. For these reasons, novel drugs need to be developed that either have new mechanisms of action or continued antagonistic activity despite mutations in the binding pocket to improve the prognosis for patients with treatment-resistant prostate cancers. This project will focus on the latter by utilizing in silico virtual screening as a fast, high-throughput method to screen large compound libraries. This will provide data on the structural chemistry of the androgen receptor and of known ligands, which will be used in the design and optimization of novel compounds that may potentially address the issue of resistance in prostate cancers. As such, this project has two main objectives. The first is to evaluate the efficiency of ligand-based and structure-based virtual screening approaches on the androgen receptor. The second is to use the data gathered from these virtual screening approaches to design and optimize novel ligands that are predicted to have greater binding affinity and antagonist activity in both the wild type and mutant androgen receptors. The androgen receptor is part of the nuclear hormone receptor superfamily and consists of four functional domains. These domains are the N-terminal transcriptional regulation domain, DNA binding domain, ligand binding domain, and the hinge region. As the name suggests, the DNA binding domain is responsible for binding to specific hormone response elements in the DNA using its two zinc finger motifs. The N-terminal transcriptional regulation domain participates in protein-protein interactions and is important for gene regulation. The DNA binding domain is connected to the ligand binding domain by the flexible hinge region, which allows for intranuclear motility and control of androgen receptor activity. The ligand binding domain contains the binding pocket, which is the target for endogenous and exogenous ligands. In addition, it contains the activation function 2 domain, which is a hydrophobic surface composed of helices 3, 4, and 12. This surface helps form the co-regulator binding site and mediates direct interactions between the N-terminal and ligand binding domain, which stabilizes the active conformation of the receptor when bound to agonists such as DHT. Since the binding pocket within the ligand binding domain of the androgen receptor is the target for drugs treating prostate cancer and is associated with frequent mutations that render these drugs ineffective, the structural chemistry of the binding pocket will be a main focus in this project. Non-steroidal antiandrogens are one of the most common drugs used in the treatment of prostate cancer. These drugs act by competitively inhibiting the binding pocket of the androgen receptor, and in doing so, it is thought that these compounds prevent helix-12 from covering the binding pocket, consequently preventing the formation of the crucial AF2 domain, thereby inhibiting the activity of the androgen receptor. To combat this, many cancers acquire mutations in the androgen receptor binding pocket that convert these non-steroidal antiandrogens into agonists. A classic example of this phenomenon can be seen with a first-generation non-steroidal antiandrogen bicalutamide. With prolonged use of this drug, cancer cells acquire the tryptophan 741 leucine mutation in the androgen receptor binding pocket, which converts bicalutamide into an agonist. The superposition of this mutant receptor with the wild-type receptor in its active conformation shows that they adopt incredibly similar conformations. Importantly, helix-12 is allowed to cover the ligand binding pocket in both of the structures and thus contributes to the formation of the AF2 domain. This suggests that the tryptophan 741 leucine mutation prevents the displacement of helix-12 by bicalutamide, allowing the receptor to adopt its active conformation.
Later in this presentation, I will attempt to further explain this phenomenon at the structural level while also providing a potential solution for drugs. Since bicalutamide is one of the most commonly used androgen receptor antagonists for the treatment of prostate cancer and causes no mutations in the androgen receptor that confers resistance, it will be used as the reference antagonist compound for this project. The main program used in this project is the in silico modeling software ICM Pro. ICM Pro provides high quality protein structure analysis and modeling. It can be used to study bound ligands, predict binding or interaction sites, and can perform small molecule or protein protein docking. To get a preliminary idea of what residues lie in the binding pocket of the androgen receptor and to identify any potential important residues for ligand binding, the crystal structures of agonists and antagonists bound to the androgen receptor were explored in 3D. Following the identification of the residues lining the binding pocket, multiple sequence alignment of the binding pocket to a human reference proteome was conducted. Proteins with similar residues in the ligand binding domain were selected for further investigation, and mutations were introduced to the residues unique to the androgen receptor to determine the importance for ligand binding. To determine the efficiency of structure-based screening approaches on the androgen receptor, several structure-based screening methods will be employed. These methods utilize the three-dimensional structure of the target protein to dock compounds. Docking is a process in which a software samples various binding poses of molecules and attempts to predict the likely binding positions and affinities of the molecule at the target. As the name implies, the success of structure-based virtual screening is heavily dependent on the quality of the protein structure that compounds are being docked onto. For this reason, I utilized cross-docking, a strategy that is used to find the most suitable version of the target protein. It involves docking a set of known ligands to multiple different crystallized structures of the androgen receptor from the PDB. The known binding affinities of these ligands can then be compared to the docking scores obtained across all the crystallized androgen receptor structures to determine the most suitable crystallized structure to be used in future docking simulations. After identification of the optimal androgen receptor from cross-docking, both fragment and drug-like compound libraries were docked onto this receptor. The purpose of this is to identify interaction hotspots and to determine the efficiency of structure-based virtual screening through the enrichment of known agonists and antagonists. In addition to the structure-based virtual screening techniques, ligand-based virtual screening techniques were utilized. This approach screens molecules based on their shape and pharmacophoric properties relative to known active ligands. Put simply, the more similar a test compound is to the template compound, the higher the score the test compound will be given. An advantage to the use of ligand-based virtual screening methods is that it allows for quantitative structure activity relationship analysis, also known as QSAR. 2D QSAR techniques utilize the chemical structures and pharmacophores of known ligands and includes R-group decomposition, matched pair analysis, and structure activity landscape index experiments, also known as SALI. Using a library of known active compounds, R-group decomposition determines the frequency of specific R-groups of a particular scaffold and its relationship to the compound's activity. Similarly, matched pair analysis and Sally analysis compares two compounds with similar structures to examine the contributions that specific R-groups have to their activity. In addition to the 2D QSAR techniques, atomic property field 3D QSAR techniques were also used. This differs from the 2D QSAR techniques since it utilizes the compound's atomic property fields in 3D rather than their R groups. Atomic property fields are the empiric physical chemical properties of compounds, including their hydrogen bond donors, hydrogen bond acceptors, lipophilicity, charge, size, and sp2 hybridization. Based on these properties, a ride screen can be performed in which the atomic property fields of a template compound will be used to screen large compound libraries. In a ride screen, ICM Pro will attempt to superimpose compounds with similar atomic property fields onto a template compound. To determine the efficiency of structure-based and ligand-based virtual screening when used together, a ride screen was first conducted, followed by the docking of the top scoring hits from the ride screen. In theory, the initial ride screen would quickly filter large compound libraries for compounds predicted to be active based on their APFs and these compounds would then be docked to determine if they obtain reasonable binding poses in 3D. Enrichment factors were calculated to quantitatively determine the efficiency of both structure-based and ligand-based virtual screening approaches. Enrichment factors reflect the concentration of known active compounds among the top scoring fractions of hits compared to their concentration throughout the entire database. The higher the enrichment factor, 
the higher the predictability of the screening approach to retrieve active compounds. ICM Pro's ligand editor tool was utilized to design and optimize compounds for the androgen receptor. This tool can make detailed modifications such as changes in functional groups, torsion angles, bond types and bond lengths, and cis-trans isomerism in compounds. The effects of these modifications on the binding energy of the compound are then displayed, which enables identification of favorable or unfavorable changes. Using the crystal structures of the androgen receptor bound to the agonist DHT and the antagonists bicalutamide and hydroxyflutamide, potentially important residues for ligand binding in the binding pocket were identified. First, the ligand binding pocket of the androgen receptor was identified using ICM Pro's Pocket Finder tool, which enabled the visualization of all of the residues that make up the binding pocket. After identifying the residues that comprise the ligand binding pocket, the specific interactions that DHT, bicalutamide, and hydroxyflutamide make within this domain were explored. For DHT, there was hydrogen bonding to arginine 752, glutamine 7-1-1, and threonine 8-7-7. Depending on the orientation of the hydroxyl group of THT, there is also potential hydrogen bonding with asparagine 705. Similarly, the crystal structures of bicalutamide and hydroxyflutamide bound to the androgen receptor showed hydrogen bonding with arginine 752, leucine 704, threonine 877, glutamine 711, and asparagine 705. In addition, the trifluoromethyl group that is present in bicalutamide and hydroxyflutamide where position is similarly in the binding pocket, surrounded by the hydrophobic residues methionine-749, methionine-787, leucine-873, and valine-746. These results provide a good foundation for exploring novel ligands as it elucidates to potentially important residues for ligand binding. Following the identification of residues lining the binding pocket, multiple sequence alignment was performed with the androgen receptor and a human reference proteome. Only proteins that had a sequence identity of greater than 30% with the androgen receptor ligand binding pocket were further explored. The proteins from the sequence alignment that fit these criteria were the progesterone receptor, glucocorticoid receptor, and the mineralocorticoid receptor. These proteins shared 54.8%, 50%, and 51.6% sequence identity respectively. Overall, the androgen receptor shared many of the same residues with the other proteins. However, there were three residues that were unique to the androgen receptor. These residues are threonine-877, leucine-880, and methionine-749. To identify the importance of these residues in ligand binding, the following mutations were introduced using ICM Pro. Threonine-877 to cysteine, leucine-880 to threonine, and methionine-749 to leucine, to match the residues found in the glucocorticoid, mineral corticoid, and progesterone receptors. Of these three mutations, only the threonine 877 cysteine mutation drastically decreased the binding energy of DHT from negative 39.67 to negative 11.74, which suggests that the threonine 877 is important for its binding. This coincides with the current literature and previous identification of important residues that line the binding pocket from the PDB crystal structure analysis. To conduct the cross-docking experiments, six crystal structures of the androgen receptor were selected, in which a small library of eight known antagonists and agonists were docked onto. Each of the six crystal structures generated similar docking scores for the known ligands. DHT, metrebolone, and hydroxyflutamide were consistently the top three compounds with the highest docking scores. Additionally, these six receptors had similar average docking scores at around negative 10, and each had 5 to 6 compounds that scored above the set threshold score of negative 20. However, the docking score of one compound, ciproterone acetate, differed quite heavily between each of the receptors, and its score was used to determine the most suitable receptor. Ciproterone acetate is a known competitive inhibitor of the androgen receptor and is moderately potent. However, its docking scores were consistently inferior to other ligands in the library that are known to be less potent in all of the receptors. Consequently, I chose the receptor with the PDB identification code 1T7T as it generated the most accurate docking score for ciproterone acetate that best reflected its known binding affinity to the androgen receptor. Before moving on to further docking results, I want to introduce the model androgen receptor that was used for all docking experiments going forward. Using the selected receptor from the cross-docking experiments, residues 892 to 908 were removed, which make up the entirety of helix 12. This was done for two reasons. 
The first is that no crystal structure of the wild type androgen receptor bound to an antagonist currently exists in the PDB. Only crystal structures of mutant androgen receptors bound to antagonists or wild type androgen receptors bound to agonists exist. The second is because, as mentioned earlier, Helix 12 was thought to be displaced by antagonists such as by colutamide. Therefore, it would not be practical to dock and identify potential antagonists into the ligand binding pocket of the androgen receptor that has Helix 12 and its agonist bound conformation. For these reasons, Helix 12 was deleted to allow for docked compounds to achieve binding poses that would theoretically displace Helix 12. Continuing with the structure based screening approaches, I proceeded to dock two large compound libraries. The first was a fragment compound library consisting of 2,000 fragments, which resulted in a total of 6,124 binding poses after docking. Of these 6,124 binding poses, there were several residues in the binding pocket that consistently contributed to hydrogen bonding of the fragments. These residues include arginine 752, methionine 745, leucine 704, asparagine 705, threonine 877, and glutamine 711, and are interaction hotspots within this binding pocket. Of these residues, arginine 752 and glutamine 711 seem to be of particular importance given their high hydrogen bond frequencies of 21.42% and 21.21% respectively. These six interaction hotspots were then used as restraints in the subsequent drug-like compound library docking experiments. This means that the binding poses obtained from the docking experiment will have at least one hydrogen bond to one of the six interaction hotspots. The drug-like compound library from Life Chemicals contained 5,123 compounds and was simultaneously docked with another library of known antagonists from Kemble consisting of 925 compounds. The use of this Kemble library is to determine the enrichment of known active compounds using the screening approach, which will be explained in the upcoming slides. This resulted in a total of 18,076 binding poses. Similar to the fragment compound library, arginine 752 and glutamine 711 had high hydrogen bond frequencies seen in 64.11% and 72.56% of the binding poses, respectively. In addition, the hydrogen bond frequencies for threonine 877 increased from 6.78% to 13.11%. On the other hand, the hydrogen bond frequencies for methionine 745, leucine 704, and asparagine 705 decreased to 2.36%, 6.83%, and 7.62% respectively. This suggests that arginine 752, glutamine 711, and threonine 877 may be important for drug-like compounds, whereas the contributions from methionine 745, leucine 704, and asparagine 705 are not as significant. Additionally, the known active Kemble antagonists consistently scored better than the random drug-like compounds from Life Chemicals, which indicates that docking may be an effective screening method for the androgen receptor. The details of this enrichment will be thoroughly and quantitatively described shortly. Moving on to the ligand-based virtual screening, the first step in this approach is to obtain a compound library of known active ligands to analyze for structure activity relationships. As such, I retrieved a compound library of 925 known antagonists for the androgen receptor from Kemble. Importantly, each of these compounds have an associated p-act value, which is a measure of the compound's activity, and is an important parameter in determining structure activity relationships. Using this Kemble library, I first conducted an R-group decomposition analysis on seven populated compound scaffolds. Of these seven scaffolds, only two showed strong structure activity relationships. In the first scaffold, a trifluoromethyl group at position 1 was the most frequent R group. In addition, many of the compounds with this R group had high activity. In the second scaffold, a hydroxyl group at position 1 was the most frequent R group with the majority of the compounds with this functional group having high activity. To determine the importance of these functional groups for ligand binding, the highest activity compound from each of the two compound scaffolds were docked to identify any interactions in the binding pocket. For the first scaffold, the trifluoromethyl group occupies a similar space in the binding pocket as bicalutamide and hydroxyflutamide, and is thus predicted to make similar van der Waals interactions with methionine 749, methionine 787, leucine 873, and valine 746. For the second scaffold, the hydroxyl group is positioned near glutamine 711 and arginine 752, allowing for potential hydrogen bond interactions with these residues similar to DHT.
This coincides with the findings from the previous docking experiments and crystal structure analysis in which the same residues were identified to be important. These results suggest that the trifluoromethyl group on scaffold 1 and hydroxyl group on scaffold 2 are important for ligand activity and are potential functional groups to consider when designing and optimizing novel ligands. To supplement the R-group decomposition analysis, matched pair and Sally analysis of the Campbell Library was conducted. From the matched pair analysis, similar functional groups were identified that conferred higher activity. Hydroxyl and trifluoromethyl groups were commonly associated with higher scores from the analysis and are thus associated with higher activity. In addition, phenol and nitrile groups also scored highly and are associated with higher activity at the androgen receptor. The Sally analysis revealed that there were no true activity cliffs within the compound library. This means that no severe changes in activity were associated with any R groups. Although there are a few exceptions, as indicated by their high Sally scores, these compounds are not relevant as they are too large to fit into the binding pocket of the androgen receptor and thus have no practical significance. These results provide valuable insight into the important functional groups that confer activity in the binding pocket of the androgen receptor that can be utilized in drug design and drug optimization. Before conducting the ride screen, I first determined if the APF approach was properly ranking my Campbell library using APF 3D QSAR. This is similar to the 2D QSAR techniques mentioned previously, however this time these techniques explore the APFs of compounds in 3D and its relationship to the compound's activity. To do this, I randomly separated my Campbell library into a training set and a test set, which contained 460 and 465 known antagonists, respectively. ICM Pro then generated a machine learning model for the training set using the APFs of DHT and biclutamide as a template. Using the training set, the machine learning model obtained an R squared value of 0.8 between the compound's activity and APFs. When the machine learning model was run on the test set, an R squared value of 0.38 was obtained. These results indicate that the APF approach was indeed ranking my test set appropriately in which higher activity compounds had greater APF similarity to the templates. One issue with this approach is that it accurately ranked compounds structurally similar to DHT but not those similar to bicalutamide. This is particularly evident when looking at the top scoring compounds that the model identified. Of the top 50 scoring compounds, 49 of these compounds structurally resembled DHT. The remaining compound was bicalutamide, which was ranked 28th when it should have been ranked much higher since bicalutamide was one of the templates used for the screen. This suggests that this method can determine accurate relationships between the APFs of steroidal DHT-like compounds and their activity, but not compounds with similar APFs to bicalutamide. Similar results were obtained from the ride screen, which also used DHT and bicalutamide as the APF templates. In this screen, 2 million random compounds from the enamine database and 965 known antagonists from Campbell were used. The cutoff for the screen was 35%, meaning that only compounds that had greater than or equal to 35% APF similarity were retrieved, resulting in 4,967 hits. Of these hits, the known compounds that had APFs similar to DHT scored well, with an average similarity score of 53%, whereas the random enamine compounds had an average score of 37.5%. However, the known compounds that had similar APFs to bicalutamide scored much lower, with an average similarity score of 37%. Additionally, the top scoring compounds of the riot screen were enriched in compounds with similar APFs to DHT, but not compounds similar to bicalutamide. The results from the ride screen reinforce the findings from the APF 3D QSAR experiments and suggest that the APF approach can efficiently screen large compound libraries for steroidal compounds similar to DHT, but not non-steroidal compounds like bicalutamide. As Afer mentioned, the ride screen of over 2 million compounds generated 4,967 hits. Of these hits, 2,142 of the top scoring compounds were selected for docking, which resulted in 6,076 binding poses. It was found that the known active Campbell compounds in this library achieved better scores in which a difference of negative 9 was observed between the highest scoring Campbell compound and the highest scoring random enamine compound. Additionally, there was a greater proportion of known active compounds in the top scoring fractions of the generated binding poses compared to random decoy compounds. Importantly, the top scoring compounds were not limited to those similar in structure to DHT and includes those more structurally similar to bicalutamide as well.
These results indicate that the combination of ride screening with docking simulations can efficiently screen compounds for the androgen receptor and that combining these approaches may be more effective than using one over the other. To quantitatively determine the efficiency of these structure-based and ligand-based virtual screening methods, the enrichment factors for the drug-like compound docking simulation, ride screen, and combination approach were calculated. Enrichment factors reflect the probability of finding active compounds using a certain screening approach. For example, an enrichment factor of 2 for the top 1% scoring compounds of a library indicates that the screening approach is twice as likely to retrieve active compounds compared to a random selection in this fraction of the library. Of the three screening methods, the drug-like compound docking simulation had the lowest enrichment. The ride screen combined with the docking had the second highest enrichment and the ride screen alone had the highest enrichment. Although the ride screen had the highest enrichment for known active compounds, it is important to note that these screens were conducted without using the structural information of the androgen receptor, and thus many of these hits are not practical in the context of the 3D ligand binding domain. In addition, many of the known antagonists from the Campbell Library were structurally similar to DHT and bicalutamide template, which may bias the results. Both of these factors thus inflate the calculated enrichment factors for the ride screen. On the contrary, the enrichment factors for the drug-like compound docking screen were relatively low, but the compounds enriched may be more significant as they have a structural 3D basis in the binding pocket and no template was used to bias the binding poses and their scores. I believe that combining ride screening and docking is the most practical and efficient screening approach since the initial ride screen increases the enrichment of known active compounds while the docking simulation filters out impractical compounds that the ride screen retrieves. In other words, combining these approaches make up for their individual weaknesses. In general, all of the mentioned virtual screening methods prove to be efficient for screening compounds for the androgen receptor. Using the data gathered from the ligand-based and structure-based virtual screens, two compounds were designed and optimized with the goal of antagonizing the androgen receptor. The first compound that was optimized was bicalutamide, in which several modifications were made based on their desirable effects on the binding energy of the compound. The major changes include the removal of three oxygen atoms, the addition of a nitrile group, and the substitution of the fluorobenzene group with two benzenes attached by a single carbon. The removal of the three oxygen atoms was done to minimize the unfavorable electrostatic interactions in the binding pocket, and the addition of the nitrile group was to allow for hydrogen bonding with 3 877 The fluorobenzene group was replaced with two benzene rings for two reasons. To take advantage of the large hydrophobic surface that Helix-12 normally covers, and in doing so, prevent Helix-12 from adopting its active conformation. Indeed, there is significant clashing between the thionine-895 of Helix-12 with the benzene rings of the novel compound. These modifications reduce the binding energy of the original bicalutamide compound from negative 13.39 to negative 37.82, suggesting that this modified compound is predicted to antagonize the binding pocket of the androgen receptor with higher affinity. The other compound that was optimized was obtained from the combined approach of ride screening and docking. This compound was the top scoring compound from the docking simulation that was similar in structure to bicalutamide. For this compound, two pyrrole rings attached to a single carbon was added to the meta position of the B ring via a sulfur atom. Similar to the modifications made to bicalutamide, this large R group takes advantage of the large hydrophobic surface that Helix-12 normally covers and prevents Helix-12 from adopting its active conformation. As you can see, there is significant clashing of methionine-895 and isoleucine-899 of Helix-12 with this compound. Thus, it is predicted that Helix-12 would be displaced. The addition of this R group reduced the binding energy of the original compound from negative 35.71 to negative 37.89. It is important to note that the nitrile, trifluoromethyl, and hydroxyl groups of these compounds were not changed, as these functional groups make important hydrogen bond and van der Waals interactions as determined in the crystal structure analysis and docking simulations. In addition, these functional groups were determined to be important for activity in the previously mentioned 2D QSAR analysis. Both of these optimized compounds are predicted to have greater binding affinity to the androgen receptor than their original compounds, and are predicted to have antagonistic properties as they both clash with residues in helix-12 of the androgen receptor. The newly optimized compounds were then docked onto the tryptophan 741 leucine mutant androgen receptor to see if they could potentially retain their predicted antagonistic properties.
The crystal structure of bicalutamide bound to this mutant receptor shows that the mutation allows for the B-ring of bicalutamide to occupy the space that the indole ring of tryptophan normally does. In doing so, the B-ring does not protrude out as far towards helix 12 and there is no steric clashing with any of its residues. However, both of the optimized ligands still significantly protrude outwards towards helix 12 due to their additional aromatic groups. Similar to bicalutamide, one of their aromatic groups fits into the space provided by the missing indole ring of tryptophan 741, however, the other aromatic ring still makes significant protrusions towards helix 12. Indeed, the first compound clashes with methionine 895, and the second compound clashes with isoleucine 899 of helix 12. This suggests that both of the optimized compounds can act as antagonists despite the tryptophan 741 leucine mutation. The aforementioned results from the structure-based and ligand-based virtual screening methods address both of the objectives of this project. The structure-based and ligand-based virtual screening methods efficiently and effectively screened compounds for the antigen receptor in which they consistently retrieved active compounds within a library of decoy compounds. Additionally, these screening methods provided valuable insights onto interaction hotspots in the binding pocket and on important functional groups of ligands that confer activity. Using this data, compounds were designed and optimized that are predicted to not only have higher binding affinity, but also have antagonistic properties in the wild type and the tryptophan 741 leucine mutant antigen receptor. Going forward, there are multiple experiments that can be conducted to build on the findings from this project. One of the most important would be to obtain crystallized structures of the wild type antigen receptor bound to its antagonists. In doing so, the structural changes involved in androgen receptor antagonism can be clearly identified, which can then be used to accurately design and optimize drugs for the androgen receptor. In addition, the screening experiments conducted in this project should be repeated with larger compound libraries to see if similar conclusions can be made. Lastly, other novel compounds need to be designed to address mutations other than the tryptophan 741 leucine mutant that confer resistance to current anti-androgen pharmacotherapies. This concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. I hope that you found some of the content of this presentation insightful and stimulating.